Good morning! So, welcome back again to another video discussion that we will be having. So, this is actually a continuation of our vector-borne diseases. So, welcome everyone! So, this is Jomar Adam. So, thank you for watching this video and I hope that you will be learning something new today. So, welcome back and I hope and like what I always say, I hope that you enjoy learning because when you enjoy learning, things will get a lot more easier when you are studying, when you are trying to learn a new skill, a new topic, and I hope that will be the case today. So again, I just want to greet everyone a pleasant morning, a pleasant afternoon, a pleasant evening, or perhaps a pleasant um, dawn if you are watching it at whatever time is it now. So. Let's move on to our discussion. Again, it will be all about your vector-borne diseases. So vector-borne diseases, a quick recap from our last discussion last time. So when we say vector, it is actually um, the vector is actually the living organism that carries the pathogenic agent, be it a virus, a parasite, or a bacteria that actually causes the disease. So a quick recap the last time we talked about the different vectors like your snails your lit your ticks your your loot your lice and then your triatomine bugs your sunfly your cheche fly and of course we also have your mosquito we just also discussed last time all about your dengue your dengue hemorrhagic fever the different tests needed to detect it to identify it and also the different symptoms depending on the grade of your dengue hemorrhagic fever as well so today what we'll be having is all about your zika to be honest your zika your dengue and even your chikungunya are actually very much similar not only because they actually have a similar symptoms but perhaps because they also came from the same family which is your flaviviridae so most of them are actually very similar and all all of them are actually being vector born as well and of course so a quick recap what is the vector of your dengue fever or your dengue virus what is the vector of your dengue virus so answer that in your comment down below. Okay, I'm giving you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And the answers are Aegis aegypti and your Aegis albopictus. But if you're on my quiz, I will actually be requiring you to put their female Aegis aegypti and a female Aegis albopictus. Why again? Go back to our um, discussion last time. I'll be linking the video here. So it will be appearing, the card will be appearing somewhere in this screen. Okay, moving on now to our Zika. So your Zika is actually also a vector borne disease. It is actually carried by your Aegis mosquito as well. At the same time, the causative agent of your Zika is your Zika virus also coming from the family of Flaviviridae, also are an RNA virus. So, the incubation period of your Zika are, is usually from 3 to 14 days. So, the, from the moment of exposure to the appearance of the first symptoms, it actually around take us 3 to 14 days before it appears. So, the symptoms are actually fever, rush, conjunctivitis, muscle and joint pain, and headache. So I just want to um, clarify here and actually pinpoint here that unlike your dengue fever, your dengue hemorrhagic fever, also known as the uh, uh, breakbone fever, is that here most of the, um, the pain that you will be experiencing are, are of muscle and joint in origin. Okay, so moving on now. So Zika, unlike your dengue, is very much different in their transmission. Your dengue fever, your dengue virus, can only be transmitted as of today. Okay, the known studies are actually through your vector. Although just recently there was a news, there was a journal that published that there was a trans, there was a transmission of your dengue, um, dengue virus 
through sexual intercourse well that would be very much intriguing so i hope you if you are curious about that you can google it you can look for the journal and actually read about it but for the zika it is actually known that the zika is actually being transmitted through various modes first is mother to child or we call it your vertical transmission so this is during um during um pregnancy the vi- if the mother is actually in um had zika the virus can actually cross the placenta and actually in um also cause disease to the child so later on we'll talk about what happened to the child it can also be transmitted through sexual intercourse this one is really verified and this is known in the scientific community that zika can actually be transmitted through sexual intercourse for the dengue fever that would actually be another story for another time hopefully there would be more um evidences that would actually give us clue and actually would verify the study that actually had happened aside from that it can also be transmitted through blood transfusion okay it can be um uh, transmitted through blood transfusion so it's very important as well to really detect certain diseases in your blood but to be honest as of the moment and the practice your um zika is not part of the routine test for blood um blood transfusion because usually the tests are um syphilis your hepa b your hepa your hepa b some do your hepa c and then your hiv and also your malaria of course and in some more advanced they actually do your cmv as well aside from that aside from vertical transmission sexual trans sexually um transmitted as well it is also transmitted through blood transfusion and also organ transplantation okay so those are the different modes of transmission when it comes to zika so let's talk about the complications the topic that i'll be discussing with zika is actually very short so for the complications there are actually neurologic um neurologic complications that can actually trigger your gillian barre syndrome so your gillian barre syndrome is actually a different disease as is actually a separate disease pa it's just that your gillian barre is actually a syndrome a rare disorder in which your body's immune system is actually directed against your own nerves okay against your own nerves it's actually characterized by a weakness and tingling sensation in your extremities and are usually the first symptoms okay that is usually the first symptoms of your gillian barre and because of zika it can actually be triggered so it can actually be triggered so i'll move i'll move forward so it can also cause micro microencephaly or microcephaly so when we say microcephaly it is a condition where a baby's head is smaller than those of the babies of the same age and sex so when we talk about microcephaly this is actually very um alarming spe- specifically because uh most of the time when a part uh, when a mother is actually um known to actually have your 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 zika and it, they are pregnant they could they one of the complication that they will be looking at is actually microcephaly okay microcephaly and it's very important okay it, it's very important again that's the abnormal circumference or the abnormal size of the head of your baby okay so it's actually this is gillian barre again gillian barre you actually feel some sensation um in your in your extremities and uh, again your gillian barre syndrome is that your own immune system is actually directed against your nerve cells okay your own nerve cells and this is how your microcephaly looks like so if this is the typical head of the baby a baby with microcephaly would actually have a very um small head so you can see the difference between the two okay so that is for your zika and um just recently even here in the philippines it actually started to have to be um a public health burden as well because not only is it um affecting a lot of people again it's because um it is being transmitted by mosquito and we have to take control of that okay so usually the diagnosis 
the diagnostic test for your Zika is your nucleic acid amplification test. So this is very much similar with your polymerase chain reaction. Okay, so you actually have to isolate a particular, um, a particular nucleic or genetic material from the virus, and then you amplify that, and then you measure it if there is actually if they are actually present in your patient sample. Okay, so that is actually everything about Zika. What I want to focus more for this discussion is your malaria. So let's dig into your malaria. So your malaria. Similar to your Zika, similar to your um, chikungunya and your dengue are also is also vector borne, but unlike all of those three, malaria is not a virus, not even a bacteria, but a parasite. So usually malaria actually is being carried by a female Anopheles mosquito. Yes, female Anopheles mosquito, very much similar with your Aegis. Uh, mosquito again only female because they need to feed on human blood or animal blood before they can produce or lay egg and it's very important as well for them so the causative agent of your malaria are your plasmodium species again your plasmodium species are actually parasites and not your virus and nor your bacteria so your plasmodium species we actually have four species that are harmful to humans. We have your Plasmodium vivax, which is the most common. We also have your Plasmodium falciparum, which is actually the most severe of all four. We also have your Plasmodium malariae, and you also have your Plasmodium ovale. Okay, we also have your Plasmodium ovale. So Plasmodium vivax is actually the most common, and we also have your falciparum as your most severe as your most severe one and we of course we also have the other um the other species of plus plasmodium we also have your your malaria and your ovale and aside from that okay aside from that we also have a fifth um we also have a fifth species of your plasmodium and it is your plasmodium no lessi okay it's your plasmodium no lessi so it's a different species pa compared to this four so we have your vivax we have your falciparum we have your malaria we have your ovale and we also have your no lessi okay we have your plasmodium no lessi okay let's move on so let's go to the i'm not gonna discuss the life cycle of your vector because it's very much similar of those with your Aedes, your Aedes aegypti albopictus, and your Anopheles, the life cycle is very much similar. Again, all of mosquitoes. So, we're gonna talk about the um, life cycle of your malaria. So, we actually have a, an exo-erythrocytic stage. We have your erythrocytic stage, and we have your sporogonic stage. So, as we go along, I'll be discussing and discussing the different stages from erit exo erythrocytic erythrocytic and sporogenic and maybe you already have an idea because erythro are also erythro when you say erythro these are your erythrocytes your erythrocytes also known as your red blood cells which are the main cells being affected by your plasmodium so let's dig in okay let's do this so for your erythrocytic stage cycle when we say erythrocytic stage the infected Anopheles mosquito injects your sporozoites into the human host. So that tiny little cute mosquito there will be injecting your sporozoites into your human. And the sporozoites then infect the liver cells and mature into your schizons. Okay? They will the so maybe you're wondering what is the sporozoites, sir? Are those different pa from the plasmodium? No. The sporozoite is actually a form of your plas of your plasmodium already. So this is actually the um the stage where humans are infected. Okay, this is um the stage where um the mosquito will be injecting the human or the host with sporozoites. So that sporozoites therefore would go to your liver. Okay, would go to your liver. If you go to your anatomy. Much of your blood are actually also being filtered in your, um, not of course the waste material are being filtered out through your kidney, 
but more much of your blood are also passing through your your liver okay F some are for conjugation for detoxification depending on what that um what process that it does it need so those sporozoids now will be uh, migrating to your liver cells or your hepatocytes and in your hepatocytes they will begin to mature into your schizons okay your schizons and what will happen next your schizons therefore will begin to rupture they will rupture and will now be releasing your merozoids and these merozoids now will be um in um going to your bloodstream infecting now your erythrocytes therefore the erythrocytic cycle starts so what happened here is that in your exoerythrocytic cycle your plasmodium is not yet within or inside your rbc or your erythrocytes it's still outside so what happened again let's have a quick recap so from sporozoid the mosquito anopheles um, has injected your sporozoids within the human host and those sporozoids will go to your liver yeah this tiny mosquito infected you with plasmodium in the form of your sporozoids the sporozoids will go to your liver and in your liver it will now mature to your schizons and those schizons as they also mature they will rupture and it will now be releasing your merozoids so yung merozoids merong laman sa loob and those merozoids will go and infect the bloodstream infecting now your rbc or your erythrocyte now starting the erythrocytic cycle so your erythrocyte acetic cycle now happens within your rbc or your erythrocyte so what happens is that the merozoid will now be infecting the red blood cells and it will now turn into your immature trophozoids so what are immature trov immature trophozoids by the way those immature trophozoids can either be um, first um the the immature trophozoids can actually mature or can actually progress in either direction it can actually mature into schizon repeating your step three and four again isn't it you are you are infected by sporozoid and then it become your schizont and then your schizont and then becoming now your your merozoids and then your merozoids becoming your immature trophozoid so it can actually be returning back to that on the other hand it can also mat be um it can also mature into your gametocyte we also we actually have two type we have two gametocyte when it comes to your plasmodium we have your micro gametocyte that is the male gametocyte we also have your female gametocyte that is your macro gametocyte malake big macro gametocyte female maliit micro micro gametocyte for male so it can actually be a schizont repeating uh, maturing to your your rupturing to your merozoid then merozoid becoming your trophozoid and or it can be your gametocyte aside from that so if the trophozoite mature into gametocyte it can either differentiate into your micro gametocyte again what i was mentioning that is the male and you also have your macro gametocyte which is the female so if a new anopheles feeds on the human host she will ingest the micro and the macro gametocyte and it will now enter again the sporogonic cycle okay so I just want to cl clear the exoerythrocytic and the erythro erythrocytic cycle happens on the human host and the sporogonic phase happens on the mosquito. So take for example, okay, let's go back. Take for example, your immature trophozoite mature to, into becoming a gametocyte. So it will now differentiate into a microgametocyte and a macrogametocyte. So that microgametocyte and macrogametocyte are present within the human blood, within the RBC. If in the case another anopheles, another female anopheles came back and feed on that human host, they will now be ingesting the micro and the macrogametocyte, and it will now enter your sporogonic cycle. So let's have a quick review. When the mosquito infected the human, it actually um infected the human through your sp 
sporo sporozoites sporozoites that mature into your schizons that ruptured into your merozoites that mature that um uh, matured into your that transformed into becoming your immature trophozoid your immature trophozoid can also become your schizons again or now can become your gametocyte so if the gametocytes are ingested by your female anopheles it will enter your sporogonic cycle and that is now the cycle within your little curie mosquito anopheles okay so inside the mosquito the microgamete the male the male the male will penetrate the macrogamete or the female gametocyte to form your zygote so from micro gametocyte and macro gametocyte they will be uh the the micro gametocyte will be fertilizing the will be penetrating the macro gametocyte gam or the mi micro gamete forming now your zygote and that zygote will become will turn into your o o o kinets okay and into your o o c's so from zygote it becomes now your o o kinets and then your o o c's and that OOCs, yes, OOCs and not OO bro, okay? It's OOCs. Those OOCs now will grow until they burst and release now your sporozoid. Sounds familiar? Yes, because that sporozoid will be the one being carried again by your little cutie Anopheles over here when it feeds on human and she will again transmit the sporozoid into the human host, repeating the cycle. So, as you can see, um, what infected the human, the carrier, was your Anopheles. Okay, Anopheles, it entered the human. Now, um, undergoing your exoerythrocytic stage, the sporozoids will now be in going into your liver cell. The, in your liver cell, it will mature, becoming now your schizons. The schizons will rupture, liberating now your merozoids. Merozoids will enter the bloodstream, infecting your red blood cells. Now, this is your erythrocytic cycle or your erythrocytic stage. Those RBC now will be infected. So, it, it, it the merozoid will become your immature trophozoid or the ring stage. They also call it the ring stage. And after that, it can either go and become a schizon, again, going back to the cycle, or it can actually go and become a gametocyte, differentiating either to a male gametocyte, which is your microgametocyte or your macrogametocyte. And then if the female anopheles feed on the blood again, it will now be, it will now be um, going into your, it will now be going into your, your mosquito again having now your sporogonic cycle or your sporogonic stage the macro gametocyte will pick and the micro gametocyte will for will uh, form your your zygote forming now your ookinet and then progressing to your ooc's rupturing releasing more skiz more sporozoids that will again be returned or be carried by your mosquito to the next human host i hope we are clear so if you have any questions, please do comment down below. Alright, let's continue. So for the diagnosis of your malaria, it can actually be through your rapid diagnostic test that can detect malarial antigen in the blood or it can be through your microscopic examination. And if we're going to do your mic microscopic examination, we can actually do the thick and the thin smear. You have the thin smear here, and this one you have the thick smear. Sir, maybe you're answering, what is the function or what is the purpose of your thick smear and your thin smear? Your thick smear generally is used to identify, is used to detect presence of a parasite of the plasmodium within the blood. So you don't try to identify whether it is plasmodium no lessi, vivax, falciparum, ovale, malaria. You don't try to identify that using your thick smear. That is not the function of your thin smear. Correct. So the, the thick smear here, generally you want to identify whether a parasite is present or absent. And here, what you want to do next is to identify whether or not that particular sample, that particular patient does have your malaria. Are we clear? So, this is actually how it looks like. Okay? So, on your left, that is your 
tens mirror on your right that is your text mirror so as you can see by merely looking at this these are actually your white blood cells these are wbc and as you can see these are actually abnormal appearance of your um, rbc's already these are not your platelets obviously but as you can see these are actually clump of erythrocyte or rbc and from here i can identify that these are actually um these are actually plasmodium already and if you want to know what type of that you look at your thin smear oh so maybe you're wondering sir how will you identify whether or whether or not it is falciparum or vivax again what is the most common the most common is your vivax the most um the most severe is your 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 falciparum okay so as you can see here ayan so you can see the ring form so this this is actually what you're gonna observe what your uh, question what are you gonna observe on the red blood cells the answer is your developing trophozoites okay your developing trophozoite and your immature schizons so you're gonna see this within the red blood cells okay this one the developing this one the developing trophozoites okay so again that is everything i need to, to do, tell you about zika and about malaria so thank you so much for watching so our little mosquito here is kind of drowsy and looking for the next host it will be biting or it will be feeding on so just be careful uh, maybe that uh, mosquito is carrying what again you're carrying your sporozoids or it can either be carrying some of your flabby very day so thank you so much this has been jomar adams again thank you for watching and i hope you learned something new today so again please like share and don't forget to subscribe to be updated for the latest uploads that i'll be doing so thank you so much good night good morning good afternoon whatever that that may be again thank you and have a great day